Good day, folks, and welcome to the Monash University Organic Spectroscopy Symposium. This is the online version of the event that we normally hold at the university, where students can come in and measure their own infrared spectra, their own NMR spectra, and use it to solve chemistry puzzles. But this is the online version, so you're going to hear from me today, Associate Professor Chris Thompson, who works in the School of Chemistry at Monash University. So the whole point of this symposium is to teach you the skills for what we call structural elucidation, or in simple terms, working out what molecules look like, what's connected to what. If you think about small organic molecules, how do you know how many carbons are connected to each other? Are there single bonds? Are there double bonds? Are there triple bonds? If you look behind me, you can see a bunch of rotating small organic molecules. Each of these are different with one particular feature, and that is the functional group. We've got alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, amines, amides. We've got things with oxygen in them, like alcohols, esters, carboxylic acids. Now, an organic chemist, when they're making these things, how do they verify that they've made the molecule that they think they have? How do they verify that they don't have a mixture of different molecules rather than a pure sample? The answer, of course, is by using spectroscopy. So we have these different techniques in our arsenal which we can use to determine molecular structure. There's only one catch. There's no single technique that does it all by itself. The true answer is you've got to combine some of these different techniques and put the clues of the puzzle together uh, to work out what that molecular structure is. It's one of my favourite things in chemistry because it's really just like playing a computer game or playing a board game where you've got to solve the puzzle. So in chemistry we do this using things like mass spectrometry, infrared spectroscopy, NMR spectroscopy which uh, provide different clues and when you put them together uh, it gives you enough information to work out which atoms are connected to each other. So I've got a foolproof method for doing this which I'm going to run through very quickly and then we'll talk about each of them in a little bit more fine detail. So first of all, we've got what we call microanalysis. Microanalysis allows you to uh, identify which elements are in the molecule and in what proportion. So what percentage of the mass in that molecule comes from carbon atoms? What percentage of the mass comes from hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and so on? Once we've got this, we can move on to mass spectrometry. Now, you can get a lot of information out of what we call the mass spectrum, but there's one piece of information which is most valuable, and that's determining the molecular mass. Once you've got this, you can move on to things like infrared spectroscopy, which give you some clues about which functional groups are present. Is there a carbon double bonded to an oxygen? If so, is that a carboxylic acid? Is it an ester? Is it an amide? Well, you can work that out by looking at things like, is there an OH stretch band in the spectrum? and so on to see if it's got an alcohol group or a carboxylic acid and so on. There's NMR. Now this gives you really good information about which atoms are connected to one another. You can do this for hydrogen atoms. In other words, working out how many hydrogen atoms are connected to each carbon. And you can do this for identifying what sorts of carbon environments you've got. So is the carbon in an alkane? Is it an alkene? And so on. So once you've got all of these clues, you can put that together to work out what the molecular structure is. Okay, from here, I'm going to go back to each of these steps and explain in a little bit more detail how we use them.